Hey guys, so I'm gonna record a uh, get ready with me, just a general one so that I can just be ready for when my husband gets home and look like I'm alive and not like I'm dead. So I am gonna go in the shower and then I will be back. Guys, there we go. All right, I am back. I just took a quick body shower. I am just gonna fix my hair, moisturize a little bit because my face gets really dry after the shower. Then it starts feeling flaky and that's not good. So we're gonna moisturize really quick. Now I'm gonna tell you guys a quick story time as well. And now that I'm done moisturizing, I am going to straighten my hair really quick and tell you guys a quick story. How about that? These past couple of days, I've actually been kind of crazy. In my last video, I told you guys about the pregnancy and like how my daughter told me and how I got to know about all of that. Let me clean my ears really quick. I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm just brushing it out really quick before I start straightening it. And I'm also going to put um, heat protectant. I use this one. I really like it. So I'm going to use the Chai 44 Iron Guard. If you guys hear stuff in the background, um... My in-law lives with us and she is watching my other sister-in-law's kids because she's not feeling good so she's just watching them for a little bit. It's been going on this week, kind of like a catch up and a get ready with me all at the same time. Last week, let's see, today is January, I think 10th. 11th today is january 11th i found out about my pregnancy on it was december 5th craziest thing ever because that is also my mom's birthday and i haven't told you guys this story i don't believe but my mom passed away oh wait i think it is on on this channel is it i don't know um my mom passed away when I was um, five-ish, four, and her birthday is on January, um, December 5th. So when I found out that I was pregnant on her birthday, it was just something very like emotional, very um, touching to me. I didn't expect to get pregnant um, when I did, and I didn't expect it to be on her birthday. <laughs> Because my cycle had been late for about, I think like three days. Mommy, what? No. Up until now, um, my OBI appointment was on January 9th. And I found out I was pregnant on December 5th. In reality, I think that my pregnancy was a red flag from the beginning. And I say that because I was spotting a lot since the beginning up until now. So I went, I've gone to the ER with this pregnancy, or I went to the ER with this pregnancy about three, four times. The first time was of light spotting. The second time was for brown spotting. The third time was for even darker brown spotting. The first time I went, I went to, I don't know about like you guys, but like here where I live in South Carolina, um, in the area I live in, and there are two hospitals. There's one that is like, oh yeah, that's the okay hospital, like they're not really going to give you much information. And then there's the other hospital where it's like, that's the good hospital, they're going to take care of you there, they're going to um, prescribe you something that's going to actually help you, they're going to do x-rays, they're going to check you out. The first time I went to the hospital, I went to the bad hospital. I went and they did an ultrasound and it was very sketchy in my opinion because they did an ultrasound an abdominal ultrasound the girl was like oh um after the first ultrasound she was like i'm gonna go have you empty your bladder and then i'll explain everything to you once you come back so i go i come back and she's like all right so we're gonna do the transvan transvan transvaginal ultrasound and they did that um and and as I'm waiting for her to explain to me, like, okay, so what's going on? Um, she didn't explain anything to me. She didn't tell me anything. And I was like, well, that's kind of weird. I'm waiting. And after the transvan, transvat, 
I can't say it. The after the vaginal ultrasound, she just tells me kind of like, okay, so we're gonna have so and so take you back to your room, and um, the doctor's gonna go in and speak to you further about what's going on. And I'm like, well, okay. So I'm at this point, I'm kind of scared because not scared. I'm like excited and like thinking a lot of things because in my family we're in a lot of twins and I'm over here thinking like are they gonna tell me like I have twins like was it such big news that like you couldn't tell me now you know and through my mind I'm like okay so am I gonna have twins um you know I wasn't thinking the worst just yet I wasn't expecting to hear a heartbeat because um when I went the first time I was like six weeks and maybe a day or two or five weeks and a couple days, I don't know. And I was like, okay, so this is really early on for spotting. Let me just go and get checked out. So I go to that so-so hospital. They tell me um, that baby doesn't have a heartbeat or they couldn't find a heartbeat. Then again, I was really, really early on and that it's not expected to find one yet. So I was like, you know, cool, whatever. Sounds good. It told me that my HCG levels were all right. It looked like my HCG levels were going up. That's what they told me. Now that I think about it, I went four times to the ER to be exact because I think after a week, I went back to the same ER. Um, and I, like that first appoint that first um checkup that I had was all right. I was like, okay, you know, sounds good. The second time when I was having even more like red spotting, I went back there because um it was late at night and my daughter was home. My husband was gonna go to work the next day. And what had happened then was that my daughter had accidentally elbowed me. So she was sitting between my legs and I'm holding her and during the pregnancy she didn't want to be with me like she was rejecting me for some reason it was kind of weird so she didn't want to be with me and i was taking advantage of the time like that she did want to be with me so she's sitting with me like i'm gonna take advantage keep her there um so she's sitting and i think this was on the 27th of december so she's sitting with me but when she wants to get up she um turns and elbows me like in my uterus <laughs> and um it hurt I had like I had like pain that was kind of going side to side like over my ovary and I went to the bathroom and I started spotting there um so I got concerned and I told my husband about it like oh well she was sitting on me and um I'm spotting now like I don't know and he just kind of gave me the look like I told you not to let her like you can't carry her and you're pregnant type of look and I was like I get it but like as a mom it's such there's a feeling in there when your kids are rejecting you and and you wanna you just want to spend time with them so like I said I let her sit with me right and I tell my husband that I'm spotting and I'm like so I want to I want to go get checked out He's like, cool, but I know how long it takes for ERs to like check you in. And my sister-in-law and I end up going to the so-so ER. And when we get there, they take a urine sample, they take me to do x-rays, and then they take a blood sample. They come back, they tell me that my HCG levels are still going up, but that there is blood in my urine. And I also told them that I was concerned because I had tissue in my urine. It literally looks like tissue like little white fluff tissue like pieces in your urine and i'm like flipping out emotionally because i'm like okay like this is not normal this is not normal i'm like this didn't happen with me with my daughter i did have spotting with her like i said but i didn't have um this tissue like sensation or discharge i don't even know coming out with her you know so i was like this is just not i wasn't i wasn't i wasn't going with it they are after they checked me out and everything they told me um so you do have blood in your urine and from the looks of it it looks like you are threatening to miscarry i was like 
Okay. Um, well, they didn't tell me at that ultrasound, they didn't tell me anything either. Um, I, they, I think, um, the guy at the ultrasound, I asked him, like, so do you see anything? Like, is everything okay? And he's like, well, I'm not a doctor, so I really can't tell you anything. And I just kind of looked at him like, I don't care if you're not a doctor, like, tell me something. And he just said, like, I'm not a doctor, I really can't see anything. All I do is take the pictures and... I'm like, in my head, I'm like, if you're taking the pictures, aren't you supposed to like know something? I took the pictures and he didn't tell me anything. So then I told the doctor, I'm like, okay, so there is blood in my urine. Um, what does that mean? You know? And he, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's just me, but literally he named my paperwork threatened to miscarry. And ever since that day, I've been flipping out. Literally, I think it's been two weeks-ish and I have been I was flipping out the whole time. I didn't feel right with that appointment at all. Oh, and they also told me that I had like a UTI or something. So I was kind of like, I'm like, this is just weird. This is just weird. Um, so since I didn't feel right with that appointment, I ended up going to my hospital, which is the 45 minute one, right? That's where my daughter was born. And that's where, um, that's where all my doctors are. We went the next morning because I was telling my husband, like, you know, I don't, I don't feel right with how that appointment went. Like, it just doesn't seem good to me, you know? Like, okay, okay, sounds good. So he's like, do you want to go to the other year? And I'm like, yeah, I, I want to go. So we went and over there they did x-rays. Um, they... Um, they checked me. All, all of what they did in, in the, in the other ER, they did to me at the, at the... Alright, so I had to put my camera here because the battery died on me and I'm currently charging it as I'm speaking to you. Where did I leave off? They told me at that point that my HCG levels were going up. So I'm confident and I'm like, okay, good, you know, like... That gives me peace. Like, I'm like, all right, I know the baby is okay. And um, things are flowing as they should be. So I, yes, I was concerned. Um, because they also mentioned that I had a subchronic hemorrhage. But if I'm not mistaken, I had that also with my daughter. So I wasn't like, I wasn't like super concerned about it. They told me like, oh, I'm not concerned about it. Like, I don't think you should be. And I'm like... Cool. Yep. Then, um, that was the Christmas week off, and then on the second, I went back to work, cause our school's weird. <laughs> but I went back to work, and everything was flying fine. Like I wasn't spotting at school as much as I thought I would be. Like I was spotting, but it wasn't anything crazy, crazy. Like a huge amount. Um, but I was spotting and I went to work a whole week and then come Saturday, um, the 7th, I started spotting again in the daytime and this time it was like a very, a very, very thick, um, brown spotting, like almost like a period thickness just brown um so i get concerned and i call out for my husband and he comes and he checks and i show him and i just told him like listen this is what i'm gonna do i'm like i'm gonna shower and i'm gonna go to the er me saying it that way i was like basically intentionally telling him because of my daughter and my sister-in-law was not home um she was at, like a church event so she wasn't home to watch my daughter so we would have had to take and like to take her and i was like i'm gonna go to the er and you stay here with her and he didn't accept that he's like no no no, we're gonna go we're all gonna go so we get ready and we go we get there and they checked me out again they took out blood work they did two ultrasounds and they um, took a urine sample, still came out pregnant. Um, 
they checked my ACG, HCG levels and um, not until everything was done. I had a male doctor and he was checked. Oh, they also did like um, a discharge, like a sample to see if like my cervix was opening or something like that. I don't know. But um, basically they checked my cervix, it was closed. And then after they check um, about my cervix and after the doctor leaves. So my husband was in the waiting room. Um, he was with my daughter because in a small hospital room, like it's just a very close environment for a child and it's not the best spot for any kid to be. But um, so my husband comes into the room after a while. And, um, he asked me like, oh, what are they doing? Like, are you good? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. So he comes in, he, he goes into the room with me and we're sitting there kind of normal. And I even caught, I caught um, in the ultrasound between me getting ready for them to do the transvaginal ultrasound. I caught a picture that they left on the screen of the ultrasound machine. And I took a quick picture of the baby. What I wasn't expecting for them to tell me was that the baby <laughs> didn't have a heartbeat. And expecting for them to tell me that my, um, my pregnancy was non-viable. <laughs> and um, I was in shock. I'm not even gonna lie, I, I was in shock. And that was one of the hardest things that I had to, to listen to. And I instantly just broke down because it's like, you're telling me what? It was such a tough moment, like I started crying and then the doctor walks out and well she explains everything then she leaves and my husband starts tearing up and choking with tears and it was a very hard and unexpected moment. Um, but we got ready, we left the hospital, we go home and um, so we're home and we sleep and then the next day Sunday my sister-in-law was like, oh the house it's so quiet like why are you guys so quiet because normally normally on a normal day um we are just kind of crazy like normal all over the place like we put music on we're singing um baby singing or i'm out doing something crazy um and it was just a very quiet day until my sister-in-law also found out like my husband told her and she goes in, hugs me, and I'm just kind of like speechless. Like, I think Saturday was the worst. Sunday was bad. Like, I could not talk. I couldn't talk on the phone. I couldn't, I couldn't really send messages. It was just really a very rough day. Then past a couple days, fast forward, I go to my appointment on Monday, January 9th. And I go to my appointment and I'm praying, I'm like, Lord, let there be a miracle because I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I could handle this. I, I can't take it, you know? Yeah, it was just some really, really hard news. Um, and it still is. <laughs> Today is January 11th, so it's only been a couple days. Um, but it's kind of weird. I haven't gone to work this week because of... I didn't miscarry once they told me I miscarried yesterday and today, so it's just a very, a very hard process to understand, but I will get through it and I understand that God has a purpose for everything, so um, even though I don't understand his plan and I don't understand why it happened, um, I understand that God knows God knows our life story. Um, and even though I'm short of words, I know that God will hold me and keep me strong through it all. Um, yeah, guys. Um, it's rough. It's rough out here. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to smile through it all because I know that being upset over it is not gonna get me anywhere and holding myself down 
is not going to make me grow in any way. So I will be returning to work um, on Tuesday because Monday is Martha Luther King Day. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of like overthinking it, I think, because the thing is, um, at work, I told, I work at a school and I get along with a lot of the kids and <laughs> the kids have been asking me about the pregnancy, like at school, telling me like, oh, I hope it's a boy, I hope it's a girl, like, you know, that kind of stuff. And I even got to the point to where I told them, fifth graders, I told the fifth graders that I was going to do a gender reveal. <laughs> and um, I was overthinking how I was going to tell them about this. But um, I think what I'm going to do is kind of do what I told my daughter. My daughter is only three. And... Um, the other day she was like, well, I had pain yesterday because of the whole process of having to miscarry. Um, they gave me medicine for it, so I, it did happen here at home. But um, my daughter, when she saw that I was in pain because I was kind of clenching the sides, like my ovaries and stuff, and she <laughs> she um, got close to my to my belly and she's like baby don't hurt mommy okay i want you to take care of yourself and i love you and see you later and i was like my heart you know i feel like i don't know see i'm, I'm only 24 and i'm still like i feel like an adult and then you kind of like you feel young still you know so it's like a young adult type of situation going on but um, I don't know, I don't know how to feel about this because it hurts me and it's like I feel a knot in my throat and like I feel like a knot kind of coming down, like you know what I mean? But then um, part of it feels like a dream and like it's, none of it was true and then I just trumped it but in my mind it's like I know it's true. What I ended up telling my daughter was that the baby is sleeping. And then my sister-in-law helped me by telling her, like, oh, the baby's in heaven, um, he's with God. And I just, I don't know, I want to recommend to all the moms out there that, are, that have had a miscarriage or are going through a miscarriage, keep your head up. And if you guys have children, try your hardest to keep going. Because it's a blessing to have the kid you already have. And if you don't have kids... It's a blessing to still have your own life and it is a process and it hurts and there are so many more processes that you and I will still continue to go through but remember that you are strong, remember that you can do it and that God is going to use you in so many ways from this point on so that you can go and testify to other people who are going through it. Continue to breathe, continue to smile even though you start choking up. <laughs> And um, remember you're not alone. Remember you're not alone and that it's going to get better. Okay. Kind of moving on from that point. Um, I straightened my hair. And now I'm just kind of curling my eyelashes. This is not my favorite eyelash curler though. Like, I don't... The Revlon. I don't, I don't love it. Um, it does curl my eyelashes, but I have big eyes, like I have really big and round eyes, so this doesn't really do a lot of justice for me, I feel. Um, I don't know, and I don't even have eyeliner here. I'm gonna try to do it with um, an eyebrow pencil, <laughs> and hopefully that will do a little bit of eyeliner for me. Is it just me or is it like all Hispanic households and like mothers are always yelling at whoever? I call out my daughter a lot, but I don't know. But I feel like it's just a me thing, you know? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, my mom passed away when I was like four or five and I heard that she was kind of like 
one of those like angry moms and that she slapped a boy when she was younger um, in Mexico and like doing this dance thing that they used to do at their school and she slapped a kid because he stepped on her. I was like, she had it. And here I am. I, I think I've always been such a softy. I don't know. I feel like I used to be a little bit more like tomboyish back then. And ever since like I got married, I've just been soft. Because <laughs> I can't hide anything from my husband. Like I try to keep a secret and I can keep a secret, but when it comes to like something yet like more personal, I have to tell him because I can't hold it. Uh, so I just filled in my eyebrows with what is this? I can't see it. I think it's also Revlon, but it's um like a brown eyebrow pencil. It's not like a dark brown, it's like a medium brown. So I just filled it in with this. And then I curled my eyelashes with this. And I'm gonna put on some chapstick because I'm not I'm not going anywhere today, so I just um just need to look presentable so that my husband says she got up, she's getting stronger, and she got ready. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm at. Oh, this came out. And I lost my tweezers. I don't know where they're at. And I need to tweeze these eyebrows because I tried doing the what's it called um threading like with thread but i'm not good at it i'm not good at it so i just stopped oh i also put on perfume this was a gift but i love it it's the victoria's secret bombshell looks like this and it smells so good so. i was telling my sister-in-law that I want to get better at the fact of getting ready every morning so I don't know I want to get used to putting on some chapstick I want to get ready used to the fact of putting in the keratin um, shine serum from trust me for my hair like I curl my eyelashes and I do mascara and eyeliner I don't remember what eyeliner I use but I get it from Walmart and it's like a gel it's like a little gel I don't have it here, but it's like a little gel and it has like the little brush and you dip it a little bit and then like you, I outline the inside of my eye, like my waterline. Um, and then mascara, I use the Butsum, but Butsum, 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 something like that. It's a, uh, it's kind of expensive. That one's kind of like $27, I think, or like $22, it varies. But that mascara, I've been using it for many years now. And it's because of one of my cousins and she got me hooked on it when I was going through a phase of not wanting to use mascara or any makeup at all and I don't really use a lot of like foundation and all of that concealer I do like using blush but I don't use blush I use pink eyeshadow <laughs> or like um like lipsticks and I just like kind of dab it on and I fade it out a little bit and that helps a lot but anyways, this has been my video, and thank you guys for watching um, and for listening to me. I really appreciate it because going through a process like this, it's not easy. And I could be right now laying in bed, and I could be crying my eyes out because I'm still going through a process of miscarrying. And it's just really a rough, rough situation to go through. But I'm trying to be positive because I'm always someone who smiles a lot. And if I know that someone else is going through a process, I try to hug them and give them that support that they need as much as i would like it as well so to myself <laughs> you are strong and you will get through it um and it will be okay okay so thanks for watching